Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be jumping into the mitzvah of tzitzit and the learning about that. Now, I'm a little bit uh, behind schedule as, as to what I would have liked to have for this. I um, wanted to focus on getting those, um, those uh, tying techniques and methods out there first. Um, and I uh, apologize if, you know, it seems a little bit out of order to do them first and, and, then, uh, and then learn about them later. But hopefully you've still developed a good connection if you've been practicing and thinking about this and doing your own learning and reading. But we're going to go over some of these things. Um, and maybe you'll have already seen this. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's going to be uh, new to you. If you're a new subscriber here, maybe you'll watch this before um, proceeding with the, uh, the tying methods. Um, but hopefully we can get into a little bit of learning and build on that connection. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm dividing this learning into a couple of sections. And the first one we're going to talk about is the anatomy of a seat seat. Um, so we're going to start off uh, each of these sections by, you know, reading from the meat bar 1537 to 40. I'm going to put this at the beginning of all the learning just to keep it in mind where this is coming from. So uh, speak to the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the corners of their garments throughout their generation and that they put upon the fringe of each corner a thread of blue. And it shall be to you as a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which you go astray. So fringe is a, an interesting uh, translation here, and I think it's just uh, you know one of uh, it's it's one of these things where you know it's better to just use um, the original word of seat seat um, here because. Fringe probably doesn't quite cut it. Um, so, uh, here we go. Jumping in. Um, the Torah instructs us to attach seat seat to our four cornered garments. Let's explore together some of the details of the seat seat. So, again, in this video, we're just going to talk about the anatomy of the seat seat. So what is the anatomy of a seat seat? What can the anatomy tell us, and how can it help us better connect with this mitzvah? What is a seat seat in general terms? All right, so we'll start with Rashi because we we can get this uh, good starting point of the literal meaning of the words here in the language that's used. So, but asula hem seat seat that they make for them a fringe that they make for them a seat seat. It is called seat seat because the threads that hang down from it. Similar is in Ezekiel, and he caught me by my curls of my head. So the word here according to Rashi denotes something twisted as threads or curls but we have another explanation provided by Rashi another explanation is called tzitzit because of the command associated with it and you shall look at it similar is looking may seats from the lattice in Song of Songs the word therefore denotes something looked at now um, he goes on to Tehillet and we, we might talk about that in another video a little bit more but um, Tehillet, Rashi clarifies, is um, a dye obtained from the blood of the Chilazon, a type of shellfish. So, Rashi has informed us that the word tzitzit has two potential explanations, that of curls and that of looking. Now, I don't think it's um, too going too far to say that both of these can be the correct interpretation at the same time. We, we see this uh, a lot, especially in the Hebrew language, where, you know, one word can mean multiple things, multiple words can mean uh, similar things, both can point back to the same place. Um, and so I think it's better not, rather than to, you know, sort of pick and choose here which one of these makes the most sense, um, just just think of it as both, you know, that uh, you have the the uh, seat seat meaning the curls and, and uh, denoting that this is wrapped in some way, curled in some way, um, and then you also have this idea of, of that it's um, something to look upon. So Rashi continues, and, and this is where Rashi uh, does what Rashi does uh, very well, which is he'll continue with the literal, and then he'll give us just a little taste of something more. So um, the seat seat will remind one of all the commandments because the numerical value of the letters of the word seat seat is 600. So 
600 and then there are eight threads and five knots in the fringes so that you have 613 which is also the number of commandments in the Torah so traditionally enumerated 613 commandments and uh, I think widely accepted is, is Rambam's list of those commandments but in any case uh, Rashi gives us the uh, the gematria, the, the numerical value, um, and how we get to 613. And I think this is an important thing to touch on because, you know, a lot of people um, have asked this, you know, and say, say, I've heard that it was, that it's to remind you of all 613 and that there's some number scheme there. And, and this is it. Um, and so it's important to, you know, note that, you know, we're, we're looking at this from the perspective of remembering every single one of these 613 commandments every single one of them. so um, uh, Rashi goes on um, to talk about the, the 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 word here for searching that you shall not search after your own heart and your eyes saying the heart and the eyes are the spies of the body they act as its agents for sinning the eyes see the heart covets and the body commits the sin so Rashi has, you know, given this, and I, I, I put this down here, he, he often does this. Um, Rashi's taken us from the literal through to a taste of the uh, figurative, metaphorical side of things. Um, and it gives us a good jumping off point to look at these different parts of the seat seat and also to um, think about um, the, the meanings behind them, these things. Um, now, one important note is not all of our sages and rabbis have agreed on the, uh, the requirement of these five knots. Um, and, and, and some of these seats do not have this full gematria value of 613. Some of the styles that are presented in other videos do not have this. Um, but let's go ahead and move on. We'll get into that a little bit. And you'll see the differences in opinion there. So, starting with the basics, we need threads. Uh, two kinds of each, traditionally, white and tehelet. Um, so you also need a certain number of them. Th though there's some debate, our sages conclude four doubled over into eight total threads. And now there are some people that uh, you see use uh, two threads of blue. There's some that use uh, only where only one half of these four threads is blue, so that there's one out of eight total. There's some that use a full thread of blue, giving you two strands hanging down that are blue out of the eight total. And then there's some people that you know go a step further and they have two full threads, um, leading to you having uh, you know a total of four uh, out of eight of these being uh, blue threads. Now. Um, there's, there's some reasoning behind them that, that's a little beyond the scope of this basic learning. Um, I, I chose to omit the um, tying styles where two of each are used. It's, it's uh, pretty uncommon. It's also complex. And, and with the price of, uh, of some of these tachelet threads, um, you know, it's, it can be a little cost prohibitive as well. So just stayed away from those. Um, and uh, if, if there are requests to do some of those, maybe I'll come back and, and do some later. But uh, anyway, moving on. So we have our, our four doubled over into eight. And um, so uh, Or HaChaim gives some, uh, some insight into the colors of these threads. So God commanded that the threads be white to symbolize God's attributes of mercy and goodness something traditionally symbolized by the color white. The color blue symbolizes God's mastery in the celestial regions, seeing the color blue is similar to the color of the sky. The number of the threads, i.e. eight or four folded over, also symbolizes his holy name of four letters. His uniqueness in his sanctuary is equivalent to the number eight. It is a mystical dimension of the halakha that the knot with which the blue thread is tied together with the right thread symbolizes the mystical dimensions of kindness and mercy respectively. So just some things to think about with regards to these white and blue threads. But suppose the question, 
without Tehillim, how do we represent these attributes that intermingle with each other and remind us to stay on a central path? And this is just something to think on and think about it um, on your own. There's um, one idea that I would present is that if you're not using Tehillim, um, if you're not ready for that, if you if you you're not convinced, um, that's okay. You know, consult your rabbi, talk to your rabbi about these things. Um, but uh, if you're if you're just using white threads, you know this this one strand that you're wrapping around all the others um, can be thought of as in a way like binding all these other things together, right? Um, sort of bringing uh, this this one thread, uh, you know, representing the celestial regions, representing God's um, you know power in heaven, sort of binding everything up together um, and uh, and and I think that, that that's a way that you can think about it without Tekelet but it's just something to consider so we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the Shamash so the Shamash um, is the leading string the wrapping string um, it's longer than others so that it can wrap around them and still have a similar length when completed and this lies a potential answer to the question posed above so Right, as I mentioned, um, the shamash is our center line. It's a longer line because it takes longer to be mindful and pull ourselves from the extreme. It doesn't disregard left or right, but it pulls them into the center and envelops them. We ourselves can be reminded of this when we look at our seat seat. The idea that we can take the longer path to rein in our extremes into something harmonious and beautiful. And I know that this will touch a little bit more on. We'll, we'll touch some more on this uh, in in sort of the meaning of seat seat. We'll come back to that, um, you know, some of the deeper ideas behind it rather than just the anatomy. But it doesn't hurt to start thinking about that now while we're thinking about how uh, this is constructed. So now that we've identified our strings and which of them is the shamash, we, we start with the first knot. Most of the seat seat we have today are five knots. Um, again, as Rashi told us, Seat seat is 600, 8 strands plus 5 knots is 613 in total for the mitzvot in the Torah. These knots have a functional purpose as well, which is separating the chuliot. So it's important to note that not all of our rabbis felt the need for 5 knots, such as Rambam, but we will look at this in the topic of chuliot. So I mentioned that earlier, and we're moving on to chuliot, so we'll kind of see. So what are chuliot? The 5 knots are separating these these huli Huliotes, uh, or Huliot, sorry. Um, so now we come to the bulk of at least the process of tying CC, and these are the windings between, or not between, depending on the approach, the knots. So Rav Amram Gon and Rambam follow the method below without any knots between the sets. It's important to note the portion of the text that states one who minimizes the set of windings may not wind fewer than seven sets. It appears that they have taken the minimalist approach to these, this seat seat time, seeing beauty in the simplicity of it and perhaps attempting to make it more accessible. Right, so um, I'll refer you to you know those videos, those images uh, in those videos of those two styles there. Uh, most other methods involve four chuliot separated by some form of knot. This is still halakhically acceptable because it does not minimize the windings of each set. Right. So um, we're we're going to uh, we're going to look at this a little bit. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, and I'm not going to read you um, the whole thing here from uh, Menachot. But um, if uh, let's see, where can we start here? So some some general rules about this um, is provided here. One who minimizes, this is just what I wanted to jump to, and we'll, we'll cover a little bit more of the rest of it. It was taught, one who minimizes the sets of windings may not have fewer than seven sets, and one who adds to this number of sets may not have more than 13 sets of windings. So the Gemara ex provides ex explanations for these guidelines. Um, course but may not have fewer than seven sets corresponding to the seven firmaments, and one who adds may not have more than 13 sets of windings corresponding to the seven firmaments and the six air spaces between them. So, um, looking at this, uh, 
we we have the the sort of logic bit behind Rambam, um, who who wanted to keep this simple, accessible, a sort of minimalist approach. I think allows um, for more people to do it, to be able to do it simply, um, and uh, and and keeps keeps from the complexity of it being something discouraging. And I I, I don't claim to know exactly what you know Rambam thought process was here but Rambam uh, does have a tendency to you know focus on uh, the minimum requirements what what absolutely must be done by everyone and and make that accessible and I think I think there was a stressing on making that accessible to everyone so um, so with uh, with those those little bit of rules out of the way we're gonna talk about um, the meaning with regards to uh, Rav Amram Gon, we already covered it in that text below. For others, generally the number of windings in each Huyot, right, are starting from closest to the Talit, 7, and then 8, and then 11, and 13. Well, why? Again, we're into Gematria here. So the Gematria of 7 plus 8 is equal to the yud He of the four-letter ineffable name. 11 is equal to the vav He of the same name. And 13 is equivalent to the word Echad, one, right? So in all the 39 wraps, we see that God is one. Where we have the yud he vav uh, Echad. Another tradition involves 10, 5, 6, and 5 as the number of wraps in each hulya. Each hulya then directly corresponds to one letter in the ineffable name, and it leaves out the Echad there at the end. Um, so just some insight into Huyot. Um, and, and why we have these different um, numbers within them. Break that down a little bit. So I'm going to continue through. I'm going to skip over the part that we already touched on here. Um, so, if one wound the majority of the white and the sky blue strings, the ritual fringes are nevertheless fit. And even if he wound only one set of windings, the ritual fringes are fit. But the finest way to affix the white and tehillet strings is to ensure that one-third of the length of the strings is windings and two-thirds are loose-hanging strings. And then we move into uh, what are the, the numbers, the measure of a set of windings. It is such that one winds once and winds a second and a third time. So you see this in the Rambam. Each set has three windings. Again, that minimalist approach. Um, now, you know, what, 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 do, what are we getting out of this, right? We, we can learn the rules here, but I think there's something else that's important that it starts out with. Um, it, it says, you know, if you were to wind all of it, it's good. If you were to wind just a little of it, it's good. But there's, you know, if you really want to do it the best way, you know, do it this way, right? Winding uh, one-third of the length of the strings and two-thirds hanging loose. And, and, and I think... Um, what it's allowing for here is a little bit of that idea that this can be personal and it can be within your means as well um, and uh, and it's accepted right and that's why you have such a wide variety of windings and i think that's beautiful different teachings inspired those different feelings went into them can come out of them into you all that so um we moved on, and we're going to move on past the uh, the, the comment about the firmament. We're going to talk about uh, he begins winding with a white string. So you'll notice that um, that in all of the different styles that we have of uh, of of uh, seat seat with the kalit, we start that first hulya with a white uh, thread, and we end with a white thread. Um, this is because the verse indicates that one first inserts the fringe of the corner, the white strings which are of the same type as the corner of the garment, and when he concludes the winding, he concludes with a white string, in accordance with the principle that one elevates to a higher level in matters of sanctity and does not downgrade. All right, so that about covers the anatomy of a seat seat. So um, just as a quick recap, we talked about the threads themselves, four doubled over into eight. Um, we talked about the knots. If they're in this tying method, there's five of them separating four huliot. Sometimes you have varying numbers of huliot as well. Um, we talked about the shamash, the leading 
the leading string, the, the sort of uh, guiding string there to help us wind and bind all of these together. Um, and we talked about, you know, different sides of it from the minimalist approach to, you know, the, the most, you know, over the top approach, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, and we've talked about, importantly, how the, uh, the approach that you use can vary from place to place, and it's completely okay. Uh, some people may want to, you know, consider the anatomy um, of a seat seat uh, more thoroughly than others. Some people may want to make a decision based on their, uh, their heritage, um, you know, uh, their, 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 uh, their origins, you know, are you Ashkenazi, are you Sephardi, are you Mizrahi, you, you may decide to uh, follow, follow a tradition associated with that. But I think there's a point here that you have some leeway to do this and that overall this mitzvah is about um, you know, seeing, remembering, and doing and, uh, and, and what we're trying to cultivate here is um, to do that to our, the best of our ability so that you know, our, uh, we're not following after our, our um, eyes and our heart but rather we're uh, making them follow after us. Anyway, thanks, and uh, I'll get the next video up as quickly as possible.